Hi everyone, welcome to the podcast. My name is Dr. Mark Eatonson. I'm a licensed psychologist specializing in the treatment of pathological narcissism and related disorders. And I'm also author of the book Unmasking Narcissism, a guide to understanding the narcissist in your life. So today I'd like to talk about acceptance. Acceptance really lies at the heart of the healing process for many psychological issues, including NPD. I used to work at an intensive outpatient treatment program where we used an approach called acceptance and commitment therapy, which is often abbreviated simply as ACT. In this treatment program, we had a lot of folks who had severe anxiety disorders and OCD, and their suffering was excruciating. Their lives had become intolerably narrow, and there was so much that they could no longer do because of their anxiety, their panic attacks, their obsessions and compulsions. So you might be able to imagine that they weren't always too happy when the first thing that we would talk about was acceptance. They didn't want to accept their anxiety. They wanted to get rid of it. But paradoxically, the best way to reduce the hold that almost any psychological issue has over your life is acceptance. And here's why. A large percentage of the suffering in mental illness is actually caused by struggles that occur inside of ourselves. We struggle against feelings, thoughts, fantasies, and fears. We try to, quote, get rid of them because they trouble us. But it isn't actually possible to get rid of mental phenomena. The more we think about it and stress over it, the more room it takes up in our minds. Imagine trying desperately not to think of an elephant. The very act of trying not to do that is actually what brings the thought of an elephant to mind. When it comes to thoughts and feelings, the harder we fight, the more they take over. And this is why acceptance is such a powerful tool. It's a fundamental shift in our stance toward whatever is troubling us. As the anxiety patients worked toward acceptance, they experienced fewer panic attacks, fewer obsessions, and they engaged in fewer compulsions. The cloud of dread about having another attack slowly shifted into an acceptance that attacks will occur. And this frees up energy to refocus on living a life full of meaning rather than a life spent trying to avoid having more attacks. Now, I want to stress that acceptance isn't the only tool a person needs on the path of healing and recovery, but I would argue that it's one of the most important. I also want to stress that acceptance is not the same thing as resignation. You shouldn't just throw your hands up and resign yourself to whatever's troubling you. That's a passive stance, and it actually tends to drive people deeper into their issues. Acceptance isn't passive. It's active. It's embracing what's there with both understanding and compassion. So let's talk about how this concept applies to narcissism. Narcissistic individuals tend to fight against parts of the self. They fight against feelings of inferiority or envy or shame or weakness. They try to become someone else, a person who doesn't experience such unwanted feelings. They strive toward uh, a state of self-sufficiency, need, dependency, vulnerability, these experiences belong to a part of the self that gets split off, hidden away, sometimes even from the person themselves. There tends to be a lot of reactivity to those sorts of experiences. They're pushed away until they inevitably gain enough mass to take over and cause a collapse of the individual's defenses. For some people, this happens often, sometimes often enough that they exist in a chronic state of collapse. But for others, it can be relatively rare, but it's important to note that it happens to everyone. Abraham Lincoln famously observed that a house divided against itself cannot stand. The attempt to remove unwanted parts of the self creates instability in the person's self-image, in their relationships, and in their professional life. The harder we fight against who we are, the harder we inevitably fall. And this is where acceptance comes into play. The unwanted parts of the self are still parts of the self, whether we like it or not. They represent 
authentic experience. They hold important pieces of our story that simply can't be left out. We actually lose more than we gain by trying to disown them. Healing the self means integration. It means no longer existing as separated, split-off parts of a person. But that also means taking profound ownership of whatever exists inside. It means accepting the defensive adaptations that have developed to hide and protect those vulnerable parts. Grandiosity, arrogance, entitlement, self-centeredness, these are the parts of the narcissistic experience that society rejects. And many individuals with this disorder internalize that rejection and they actually use it to further segment and divide their internal experience. A house divided cannot stand. We cannot achieve peace hating what's inside of us. So whatever you're struggling with, consider what life could be like without that struggle. Remember, that doesn't mean giving in or resigning. It means accepting what's inside as a foundation for any work that might come after. Consider the possibility that you could be a whole person and that you could still be okay it's a long process, and it's often a painful one. And it's hard to do on your own, which is why therapy is so important. But there's a simple step you can take to get started on the path of acceptance. Many people may have heard about mindfulness meditation. It's very much in vogue in recent years, but there's a reason for that. Mindfulness is all about acceptance. Study after study continually shows us that this basic shift in stance toward our mental life is profoundly impactful. So here's how you do it. Find a comfortable place to sit. Keep a straight back and set a timer on your phone for five minutes. Close your eyes and now focus on breathing in and out. Let the air go all the way down to your diaphragm and just watch. Watch your breathing. And as you do, thoughts will come. You might feel ridiculous or impatient. You might feel skeptical. Maybe you have an itch or a cramp. You'll wonder when the time will be up, etc. All of it is normal. Your only job is to watch your experience and let go. Notice thoughts and feelings, but try not to judge them. Try not to push them away and try not to cling to them. Try to just watch and let them go. If you feel frustrated that you aren't doing it right, just notice that feeling and the judgment that's attached to it and then let it go. When you notice you've drifted away from your breath and into your thoughts, notice that and then gently return your attention to your breathing. That's it. When the timer goes off, get up and go about your day. And over time, and with practice, you can extend the time you're meditating up to 20, 30, or even 40 minutes. Meditation is both easier and more difficult than it sounds. And you may be wondering, eh, what's the point? Well, active acceptance is like a muscle that needs to be exercised in order to get strong. Every time you notice a thought, feeling, or experience, and then let it go, you're practicing acceptance. And the more you do this, the better you'll get at being less reactive to unwanted thoughts and feelings in your daily life. Over time, you'll notice more space inside, more peace, less division. If you notice that you're having trouble sitting in silence, there are lots of apps that can help you with guided mindfulness meditations but consider making this a daily practice. As always, this is general information that's not intended to address anyone's specific situation. If you struggle with narcissism or NPD, you should seek the support of a licensed mental health professional who's trained in working with this particular disorder. They can help you learn to recognize the internal divisions and defenses that drive narcissistic pathology. There are many parts of the self that we simply can't see on our own. As the psychoanalyst Wilfred Bion observed, some thoughts take two people to think. Okay, 
So that's it for today. Please reach out with questions or suggestions for future episodes. And until next time, take good care.